welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the honor attraction on the community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we return to you this week with an episode of this Divisible by Four. Therefore, ipso facto, bingo bongo, oingo boingo, hmm. it is time to do the, the news. news. And we actually have a lot of news to go through. This is a fairly dense episode with an interesting mix of some very serious stuff and a little bit of levity too so yeah. please stay tuned and work with us as we go all through that um but definitely do take a moment and find us at all the places we exist you can find us at hauntweekly.com or hauntweekly on twitter hauntweekly on facebook and youtube.com slash hauntweekly as well as wherever you get your podcasts mm -hmm. we are pretty much everywhere now normally we would be asking a question of the week right about now um, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have one ready. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, holidays have gotten away from us a little bit, and we're going to talk a bit more about that in a second. So, no question of the week this week. We'll be back next week to play catch up with the previous questions of the week mm -hmm. and to also ask some new, put some new ones out there into the ether. It should be a lot of fun, and that episode will actually be recorded probably Christmas Day to go live on Boxing Day. Yeah. So, that'll be fun. And Maybe we'll do it live. Who knows? Maybe. We'll see about it. We'll think about it. So, yeah, we got a lot to do there. And speaking of things getting in the way, last week I briefly mentioned we were going to try my intro because we had to do a Redux episode last uh -huh. week. I mentioned we were going to have a researched episode this week. I had completely forgotten this was a news episode. Yeah, I'm not sure how. I made a promise that... Um, we can't we, we can't keep. So we're doing the news episode this week. The researched episode will be next week, which actually is kind of perfect timing. It is, because it as is tradition, mm -hmm. it will be holiday themed. We have a holiday themed research intensive episode about some uh Christmas legends. Yeah. A handful That's of them. That's what it usually is. A handful but, of them, yeah. you might say in this case. Yeah. So yeah, we got a we got something interesting for you. I'm I'm really excited about it. Um, it involves me throwing shade at uh, uh, L. Frank Baum, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, point. which you always enjoy doing. Even though I do um, actually enjoy the Oz books, he's yeah. just such an easy target to pick on. He is. Um, so, yeah, we got that coming up next week, so please stay tuned. Once again, catch us at all those wonderful Haunt Weekly places I mentioned previously. But one thing we do have for you this week is conference reminders. Yes. So on that note, Crystal, will you do the honors and kick us off? Sure. January 10th. <laughs> Through the 12th in Las Vegas, it's Halloween and Party Expo. And this is going to be, uh, there's hundreds of vendors. Mm -hmm. uh, must be a qualified vendor to attend, uh, business to attend. Yes. You have to submit your paperwork. It's not open to the public. Um, mm -hmm. And HalloweenPartyExpo.com for more info. Yeah, and at the Mirage Hotel. Yes. <laughs> All right. After that, February 2nd through the 5th in St. Louis, Missouri, it's Trans World Halloween and Attraction Show at the America Center, featuring a pre-show bus tour, a party at City Museum, and it's also co-hosted with the Christmas Show. Mm -hmm. Learn all the details of the Ha Show. That's H-A-A-S-H-O-W.com. Okay. Fear Expo Live, March 24th. Through the 26th in Owensboro, Kentucky, at the Owensboro Convention Center, free admission, not open to the public. It is partnered with HauntCon, uh, FearExpoLive.com. Yeah, for more information there. And also, if you are looking to be a vendor at both, uh, there are services out there that actually will transport your booth from A to B for you. Yeah, it looks like it's like a uh, shared... Um, 18 uh, wheeler type thing. Yeah, it's a really cool idea and it's actually really affordable. So if you're doing Trans World and Fear Expo Live as a vendor, um, I, I, I wish I could tell you who was doing it. I saw it super briefly and I forwarded it to a couple of people. But, um, but yeah, please check that out. There is a service that is doing that. It's really, really cool stuff. And finally for this week, April 29th and the 30th in Los Angeles, California, is the Spooky Swap Meet at the Heritage Square Museum. It's a great place to purchase gently loved, um, gently loved, uh, spooky supplies. It will include, um, 
Christmas includes uh, costumes and decor. Sorry, not Christmas includes costumes and decor. And it is created by the co-founder of Midsummer Scream. You can learn more at SpookySwapMe.com. And I think Crystal is located the thing. Yes. Uh, so if you are doing the both shows from Trans World to Fear Expo Live, go to FearExpoLive.com to find out more about their service. To transport you. Yes, okay, so it actually is through Fear Expo Live, yeah. which actually is great, because that's a good idea. Yeah. Because those are two yeah. vendor-heavy events, back-to-back, -back, uh, barely, you know, a month apart from each other. So barely, actually about two months and a half apart. So yeah, uh, check it out, FearExpoLive.com for mm -hmm. certain information on that service. Yes. <clears throat> All right. So, what work did we do on the haunt this past week? Not <laughs> none. None. It's, it's the holidays. Thing. We'll probably be ramping up work after Christmas. Yeah. I think we're going to spend most of this week genuinely taking time off. Yeah, we haven't had any time off, and especially with the store. But ever since we about started working, a year. Well, and and it's been a real ramp up in the amount of work we've had over. I would say like so between early October until now because. We went straight from the haunt to the yarn store, mm -hmm. and the yarn store is just now getting its legs underneath it where it doesn't need as much from us. Right. Like, we're getting ready to go over there this evening and assemble more shelves. Yeah. To yes. give you an idea there of what is, we're talking about there's here. There's so much yarn. There, there really <laughs> is. And soon after that, we'll be printing barcodes because we'll be doing barcode um, items very shortly because there's so much yarn, we've decided the, the, the other way of handling it wasn't working. Right. So, yeah, that should be good. Um, but, yeah, that's, we still have a lot of work to do there. But we haven't done anything on our whole line. I think we're going to take some time. And I've got some things I've got to do for my day job. Mm -hmm. But nothing as intense as what it's been lately. Yeah. Nowhere near. Which is nice. All right. So, oh, boy. We, uh, we open up uh, this week with a sad, sad story, and namely with the loss of a member of our community. Yes. Um. I guess I'll start it off. Um, this is an obituary from the Advocate Paper, which is the m newspaper of record in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, mm -hmm. which is near New Orleans. But Yes, that's where the 13th Gate is. Yeah. Uh, but Lindsay Phillips uh, passed away at the age of 23. Um, she was living what was roughly described as her dream. Yeah. Uh, working as a builder for Halloween Horror Nights. Right. She, and a tour guide. Too. And as a tour guide, as a VIP tour guide specifically, yeah. through the attraction. She helped design and build a haunted house and then worked as a VIP tour guide each night of the haunt. She also did work for SeaWorld's uh, Scream and Stream, mm -hmm. which that is a hell of a name. Yeah. Um, but she passed away on December 1st. Uh, she was working in a pyrotechnic warehouse where there was an intense fire and explosions engulfed the warehouse, trapping her and four co-workers. Yeah. That is unbelievably tragic. She was just 23. Um, yeah, and, you know, it's it's a sad story, and, you know, people tried to get in and, and help, but... Yeah, I mean, it's a pyrotechnic warehouse. Yeah, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, not a whole lot you can say either, but, other, but people are... Sharing their love and their memories, and there are pictures of haunters on the obituary page with Lindsay um, and memories being shared, and that's, yeah. that's nice to see. So if you knew her or otherwise want to express love and obviously support family and friends who did know mm -hmm. her, um, we have a link to the obituary in the show notes. Yeah. Feel free to visit there. Um, but yeah, this is, a tr I mean, losing someone at 23 is, it's heart wrenching. It's gut wrenching. And it seems like she was just starting to live her dream and do and follow her path. And uh, it really is rough and an accident by its very nature is avoidable. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that makes it even more tragic. It's just very frustrating and very sad, and I wish I have nothing but the deepest sympathies and condolences for her family, her friends, and other loved ones. Yeah. Um. I yeah. I am so sorry for the, your loss, and I'm sorry for the loss that the haunt community has endured too. Yes. All right. Doesn't get much happier for a minute. No. I promise there is levity. I really do. I want to. Yeah. What a promise. Yeah, I think this is our last serious story. Or last up. very serious one at yeah. least. Yeah. Um, so in Lorraine 
County, a habitual sex offender who worked at a haunted house, has been arrested again. Yeah. Um, this is by Cleveland 19, and Kelly Kennedy is the, the author of the article. In October, news investigation revealed that a Columbia Station haunted house was employing two registered sex offenders. They noticed this whenever workers at the haunt resigned because they found this out. Now, after those workers resigned and after it came to light in the news, the owner fired those two people. So they were not um, working at the haunt after the owner grew knowledge of it. And they've said that they've started doing background checks on all employees um, for this reason. <sighs> but Clark Inno, yeah. uh, 58, is the man who was arrested for the abuse of a four-year-old girl who was a family member. So Yeah. Uh, the story, this is frustrating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is really really frustrating mm -hmm. like this is beyond like when i i don't think i saw the story until you put it in yeah and when i read it and i went to the link and i read through everything mm -hmm. I, I was trying to stop myself from just getting outright pissed off yeah because i mean he spent 16 years in jail yeah this and the thing about it is this okay background checks can be expensive yeah i understand that yeah this isn't even a background check. No, this is just checking your local registry. You can literally punch in the names of people for free into your local state sex offender registry and find out. Mm -hmm. It's not difficult. Anyone can do this at any time. Yeah. And yeah, okay, it sucks for people like me uh -huh. because I have a common name. Yeah. And turns out there actually is a pedophile in New Orleans, or former, formerly in New Orleans. He's not here now. Yeah, he's named, in a jail somewhere. He's in jail somewhere in the upstate. I don't give a shit. But named Jonathan Bailey. Yeah. Literally. Now, you take a look at the photo. <laughs> yeah. It's obvious we're two very different people. He is short and rotund and bald. I am taller. I have long hair, facial hair. We're very, very different looking people. Mm -hmm. Other than both having both being white, we're very different looking people. Yeah. Um, so obviously not the same person. But still, I, I, I've been snagged by that before. Yeah. I've been snagged by that. But yeah, basically you can do this check yourself for free. You don't need to pay a service to do it. It's easy. Right. Um, that is what I would consider the minimum. Mm -hmm. For any haunted house, uh, professional haunted house in particular, to be doing. Yeah. That is the absolute abject minimum. Because I mean, one of the things, like we had Maddie Monster on to talk about the Bloodshed Brothers right. story a while back. And we try to find solutions. And one of the things we talked about at the, toward the end of that episode was trying to find solutions. Right. And obviously the solutions we came up with in that episode would not have helped in that situation. Right. Because it was the owners who were the predators. That's fucked up and that there's no defense against that really yeah and i admit that this was not that mm -mm. this there are solutions to this they have been known and the fact of the matter is and what's really frustrating to me about the story is the fact that other employees learned about this before the owner did yeah yeah and also why Ugh. i wonder why the employees who learned about it didn't go to the owner before quitting or did they? And yeah, like there's, there seems to be a disconnect there for me. Yeah, and I agree, but we don't know what happened between them discovering it and the resignation. We don't no. know if they did go to the owner. No, <clears throat> we don't know. Um, but even if they didn't, yeah, they should not be in a position to learn first. Right. You should know the people you're hiring. You should have all this. And I, I agree that background checks are the best way. And realistically, they're not that much money. But I also do understand there is a cost. Yeah, and there is. So you can sign up for a professional account mm -hmm. because I've worked at places where we required background checks. And I worked in the offices where we did them. Mm -hmm. And uh, professional accounts, it does not cost that much yeah. per because they expect you to do a bulk a lot. business. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's a bulk discount. Yeah, you, you're not just some idiot um, yeah. wanting to ba background check the, the person they're going on a date with that evening. 
Hey, that's actually a common thing in Dayton. I know. It just sounds weird. <clears throat> but, it, I mean, look, the way the online dating scene is, I would yeah. support absolutely anyone. Man, woman, non-binary, whatever. I support everyone checking out their potential partners. Yeah. I, I do not discourage that because mm-hmm. it is a scary world out there. Um, and that is the, one of the few things you can do to protect yourself. So, but yeah, this story is just so frustrating and it's aggravating that, you know, we work so hard to come up with solutions to this mm-hmm. problem. And it feels like the haunt industry just doesn't care about this problem until it's too late. Yeah. Because now it is an issue. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, and, you know, that was one of the things that was annoying was mm-hmm. whenever I was reading the story, the owner was like, yeah, we we let them go because we didn't want bad publicity. No, you don't want them you actually having access to the kids, you idiots. Exactly. It's like, that's the wrong, that's, I, that's the wrong reason. And I will admit it, the sex offender <laughs> registry has problems. You can get yeah. on there for some stupid things. Yeah. Use yeah. common sense when reading those. Please. Right, yeah. Because somebody mooning their friends at a high school football game is not the same as sexually assaulting a child. <laughs> right. There's a whole wealth of difference there. Exactly. But both can get you on that list. Mm-hmm. So use common sense, please. Use use your head. But the information is there. It is free to access. There is no excuse for this. Yeah. Any haunt that gets blindsided by this, set themselves up. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. That's just the way it is. Anyway. All right. Oh, great. <laughs> on to different. Different stories. Um, yeah, this one is an article uh, by the Daily American. Um, haunted attraction owners give to the Salvation Army, basically... Uh, Houston's Haunted Hollow, or Huston's Haunt. Let me try this again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Rolls off the tongue like a socket wrench. Um, Huston's Haunted Hollow in Rockwood, Pennsylvania. Yes. Um, which Huston is the last name yes. of Doug and Mark Huston. That's why I got confused. Yes, I know. And we're close to Houston. And, yeah, and, there and, and we did a tour in Houston. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, I know. It took me forever to figure out where this was because... It's in Rockwood, Pennsylvania. The people are named Huston. The haunt is named Huston. Yes. Are we God? Good enough. Huston's Haunted Hollow donated $8,000 to the Salvation Army. It, it, the Haunted Theme Park has six separate attractions. Um, I'm glad to see them donating the charity. I'll be honest and say the Salvation Army is not a charity I personally support. Mm-hmm. Their complications with the LGBTQ community are just too great. Yeah. Um, but I also understand that like a lot of places, it's not like here where I can give to a dozen different charities doing pretty much the same work. Yeah. Um, other times that's not an option and I understand that. I don't know what their local situation is, but yeah, it's, it's, they're giving back. They're trying to do a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, this is the type of thing that really does put the industry in a good light. Unlike the story above, Uh which makes us look like all a bunch of fucking criminals and idiots. Yeah. Sorry. All right. So continue, please. So continuing with the generosity. Jesus of Christ! I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to let this go for a while. I'm sorry. I just can't. Forsyth haunted attraction um, in Cumming, Georgia, re- <laughs> raised over sixty thousand for local charities. Yeah. And this benefited the American, a whole slew of chair. <laughs> American Cancer Society, Boy Scouts, Boys and Girls Club. SAFFT, Family Promise, Bald Ridge Lodge, and a whole bunch of others that I it's have almost, not finished reading. I think it's easier to name the charities they didn't give to than the yeah. charities they did at this juncture. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a lot of different... They, um, they basic since 2020, 2020, they have given back over 130000 to the local community. Mm-hmm. Um, in addition, one of their volunteers received a $1,000 college scholarship from the James K. Smith Memorial Scholarship Fund from Haunted Attraction Association. So, wow, yeah. that is a lot, and that is awesome. It is. You know, and I like this idea of giving to a variety of groups, too. I think this is very, very smart. Mm-hmm. Um, because I Spread the wealth a little spread bit. Spread the wealth, and also spread the promotion. Yeah. You're spreading the attention, too. Um, maybe, you know, th- this is a long list. Like, Crystal, like, read, like, a, and that would seem like she was reading that forever. She only got about a quarter of the way through it. <laughs> Not even that, yeah. You know, quarter, 20 to 25 percent-ish. It's a long, long list. I don't know anything about most of these charities. 
So I'm just going to have good faith and, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And assume that... Yeah, it looks like it's a a, a mixed mesh of things for um, for foster kids, for artists, for... Yeah. You know, so it I, nothing stands out as horrible. No, nothing really stood out. So, so no, it is a great... Um, thing and uh, honestly we've covered four sites a few times yes we have um so they've come up not in the, in the news multiple times on this podcast and they always seem to be doing good work and they always seem to really have a community focus One mm-hmm. of the, that's been the recurring theme whenever they've come up yeah it's been exactly that so exactly this is realistically just a continuation of what we already know mm-hmm. this brings mm-hmm. us to netherworld yes near atlanta doing something really really kick-ass Yes, I wish I had learned about this oh. earlier. Oh, me too. This is so cool. This is an article from the uh, it's Hunter Boyce at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Um, they held a special behind-the-scenes lights-on tour open to the public. Yeah. Basically. A now, VIP t- event. It's a VIP event. Uh, now, tickets were $125. Mm-hmm. But you got an hour-long guided tour of the attraction... You got admission to the House of Creeps Monster Museum, photo opportunities at preset locations, and a souvenir printed photo for that price. So you got some shit for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have absolutely loved to have done this. Yeah, price be damned. We'll cough up the two fifty. We'll, yeah, we'll, exactly. I'll cut that check. I'll cut that check right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they got to experience the detail behind the scenes at Netherworld, and it was described as an intimate tour. That quote unquote most haunted house fans could only dream of. I bet. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, because groups were limited to a maximum of six people. Per that group. is amazing. There. Yeah. Honestly, having been through Netherworld, groups aren't limited to six a lot of times when they're open. Exactly. This I is, mean, that's why this makes it feel more intimate. Yeah, this is incredible. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, this isn't a great experience. And I think this is a great idea. And this is the time of year to do it, actually. Yeah. If you're not doing a Christmas show. Right. If you're not doing a Christmas show, this is the time of year to do it. And the reason is, most haunts that I've ever been involved with in any way, mm-hmm. their season runs September, October. They usually don't do much in the way, unless they're a complete knockdown haunt and they have to vacate the space. Yeah. They don't do much work. November, December. They take that time off. Like We had a friend who owned a haunt. He would make a point to spend a week in Disney World. Yeah. <laughs> like during this time. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck the haunt. I'm going to Disney World, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Don't blame him. Great idea, actually. Very much support this idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're probably not doing much in terms of teardown. You're going to start your actual construction in the new year, most likely. Mm-hmm. And so this is a great time just to say, hey, you want, you want to see what it's like behind the scenes? Come see it before we start changing it. Exactly. And one of the cool things they did was they went through all of the storylines of the haunt too um yeah in addition to the and, and, and i saw that and sets. yeah and it made it, it interests me because like i said we went to netherworld the last year at their old location right i don't did not particularly pick up on any storylines no me either i'm I, very curious <laughs> I mean, hey, it's I'm possible. I'm not the only one. Yeah, no, I didn't pick up shit in terms of storylines. I suspect um, either A, that's something they added, which is a great thing to add when they moved and had a chance to re- revamp. Mm-hmm. Or B, we just weren't looking in the right places. Because admittedly, this was that Atlanta trip that we did a great job planning and executing. But the planning and execution was rushed, I admit. We were crunched for time at every juncture in it. So, yeah, this is just an awesome thing. I love this idea. And think about it this way. At um, $125 per ticket, each group of six is netting $750. Yeah. That's not bad. Mm -mm. That's not bad. You you don't need very many groups to make this a profitable evening. Right. And you don't have to have as many people working it Mm. because they're... You're not doing scares. Yeah, you just need your guides. You just need your guides and your, you know, people who really know the haunt. Yeah. Which, honestly, that's going to be your core people anyway, so they're probably already there. Exactly. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that is um, that's such a cool idea. I really wish more haunts did this. Like, I have had behind-the-scenes tours of a lot of the haunts locally. I would still pay the money to go on a, a guided tour like this. Yeah. Absolutely. In a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. I would love to see it. Yeah. All right, moving on. All right. Realm of Darkness Haunted House in 
Kokona, Michigan. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Yeah, uh, that's a really to, Hawaiian name for Michigan. I'm not going to lie to you. He's moving to the former Starlight Club. The Starlight Club had been opened for 50 years, and within uh, seemingly moments of its announcement on Tuesday that they were closing their doors, um, Realm of Darkness snatched it up. Yeah. Uh, it's going to triple the amount of room that they have to expand. So they're really excited about it. Um, and their la- the last day to visit the Starlight Club before it changes hands is December 17th, which is already passed. Uh, it was a few days ago. Um, so in next season's Realm of Darkness it will be their 10th anniversary. Yeah. So um, 10th anniversary in a new location. That should be pretty... A new, a significantly bigger location, yeah. no no doubt. Yeah, this one really intrigued me. Uh, and yeah, by the way, this is an article by Ale- Alexandria Cloen at uh, the Appleton Post Crescent, which is a name... Yeah, sorry. Once, once again, flows right off the tongue. Yeah, I was I was focusing on how to say so, the yeah. town name. I, you know, that, <laughs> I can say, that is a lot of Hawaiian and, and that this... name for Michigan. I'm just being honest. I don't know. I don't know the the origin of the town name, but if you had told me just hey, yeah, they went to this town, I would have said Hawaii. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But yeah, no, this is interesting because the Starlight Club is apparently an event space and an event venue and restaurant. And if it's like um, other event spaces that I'm familiar with, mm-hmm. and it probably is. That means it's functionally a warehouse in a mm-hmm. lot of ways. Yeah, a big cover climate controlled area. With space to hold events mm-hmm. <laughs> and a restaurant um, attached to it or connected to it in some way. Um, yeah, it had been there, like you said, 50 years. So, and we don't know why it made the, the choice to close. It's sad that it did. Wow, and I'm looking at the photos on Crystal's laptop of the space. That is a huge fucking event space. Holy I'm sorry, sh- it's in Wisconsin. Um, <laughs> I thought you said it was Michigan. Yeah, apparently when my brain read it, it flipped the, the um. Up, well, now I'm, now the name down. makes even less sense. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, oh, sorry about that. It's in Wisconsin, not Michigan. Michigan yeah. Just flip the M to a W and pretend we uh we know what we're talking about. Yeah. I'm looking at the photos that Crystal pulled up of the Starlight Club, and that is a huge fucking space. I've got to be honest about yeah, that. Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't know how many square feet that is from that photo, but geez. Mm-hmm. That, that, I can see how it tripled the space for a small haunt. Um, but yeah, the realm of darkness snatched it up within minutes before of the um, of the announcement. Um, I personally, it sounds to me like they had, you know, some kind of forewarning that was going on the market, mm-hmm. and it probably struck a deal, which is good. That is not a bad thing. I, I'm not knocking that. Um, so yeah, I think this is great. That it's sad that a place that's been open 50 years is closing. That always yeah. sucks. It does. And, and, and in New Orleans, we actually have a term for that. We say it ain't dare no more. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of things that ain't dare no more in this city. Ask about Schwegman sometimes when you come down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is at least a great repurposing of the space because those types of spaces can be hard to fill and become gaping holes in a cityscape very easily. Yeah. What's up? Nothing. I'm looking at the pronunciation and I... Can't, okay. I can't. Be. We're making another run at it or no? No. Sorry, it, sorry, it, it, um, people from that town. We just, we're, uh, we're yeah, Southerners it, and, and our tongues don't bend that American way. American word. Oh, it's um, Native American. Oh. Yeah. It means portage. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I guess the thing it ends in Kuna or Kauna. Uh, it, it looked uh, Hawaii. No, uh, well, but no, that's interesting that the origin is, is, yeah. is very interesting. Um, so, yeah. But. Yeah, uh, this is great because we've seen what happened locally, like when the Kmart closed, the nearest yeah. our house. What is yeah. that Kmart now? Nothing. A, a fucking disaster. Look, a great place to shoot your post-apocalyptic film. Yeah, I've been looking on, since it closed. I've basically been keeping an eye on that location to see if it ever went for sale anywhere. Yeah, and I think I found it one time, and it was like. 1.2 million. Yeah, they're going to want an incredibly high. Um, I am out. Yeah, because, you know, it's not that far from the house, and it'd be a giant haunted house. No, oh, it would be a, I think it's got to be, be at least awesome. 15,000 square feet. Yeah. It's got to be, it's huge. But. It, it was a, it's a huge big box retailer. Um, it would be a great haunted house, but yeah, that location, since that Kmart left, 
has had nothing happen to it. And Mm -hmm. that sucks because that's a busy part of the New Orleans uh, suburb. This is on one of the suburb rings, I would argue. But it's a busy stretch there that just looks dead and dying. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, <laughs> I, I'm very happy that the haunt was able to step in and at least make use of the building <clears throat> mm-hmm. to take some of the sting out of losing what apparently has been an institution in the area for 50 years. Yeah. All right. Now, this next one is interesting. Mm-hmm. And I think this is something haunt should copy. <laughs> yeah. I think this is exactly. fucking brilliant. Um, the headline reads, Haunted Mansion, Disney Story Beyond, Mystery Game, and new merchandise coming in January to Tokyo Disneyland. This is an article by Spencer Lloyd of Walt Disney World News Today, the WDWNT. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, uh, there's no no changes are coming to the attraction. Yeah. But um, just get that out of the way now. Yeah. Don't worry. Uh, the Haunted Mansion ain't changing. <laughs> uh, well, so... Not that one, but however, Mm -hmm. I did read a different article that I didn't put in. Okay. Um, that the hat trick guy from California, yeah, Haunted Mansion will be implemented in Florida in the next year. Oh, neato. Yeah. So they are making that little. Yeah, they constantly make tweaks to it. Yeah. But anyway, back to back to Tokyo. That's not the point for this one. Uh, The actual attraction will not be seeing any changes. But they are expanding the lore and the universe around the attraction fairly yeah. significantly. The way they're doing it is for a small fee, guests can purchase a quote-unquote mystery-solving guide at select shops around the park. And once they scan the QR code in their Disney app, the line app, uh-huh. um, they will be taken across the park in search of 13 mysteries for the ghost ride. Basically trying to find the fucking ghosts. Yeah. The 13 ghosts, legendary. Exactly. And there's riddles to solve along the way with exclusive details about some of the mansion's residents. And when you solve the riddle and get to the right spot, the AR offers a photo op with the ghost. Yeah, exactly. This is fucking bitching. It is. This is great. Yeah. I want this. I do too. I And, you know, we've been talking a couple of years about how AR could be utilized at haunts. And this is a good opportunity for it. Yeah. I mean, it combines, like, we've seen the thing, the ghost hunting AR game. Right. Uh, that uh, Zombie Army produced. Yes. It was them who did it. That was cool. And I, and honestly, given how much that you're getting for it as an attraction, mm-hmm. the amount they were charging for it was ridiculously cheap. Yeah. I mean, it was a whole, the whole point of it was to make queue line time entertaining, mm-hmm. allow guests to do something unique and adventurous while in the queue line. I thought that was freaking brilliant. I'm not sure if it's still a thing, but it damn well should be because it's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got a cell phone. Let's put that to work, right? Nope. Um, but this is just great because, you know, A, it's going to get those guests all over the park mm-hmm. and including the parts of the park, they may not have gone without that. So I may have misinterpreted the story a little bit. Okay. What's up? It may not be AR. Okay. It may be artists rendering that's placed around the park to bring more focus to the mansion. Okay. I thought it was an AR thing. I thought so too. But regardless, it's still a cool anyway. thing to get. It's a, the Either scavenger way. hunt element. Yeah. And that's where I was actually kind of going with yeah. it. Was <laughs> if you don't want to implement the AR side, if the AR side's too expensive, if you've got uh-huh. a property where you can send people exploring a scavenger hunt. Oh, yeah. People can, love those. People are suckers for scavenger hunts. Yeah. I mean, they really are. And so you get. They're, they're a huge business here in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Because there will be pop-ups of different themed ones yeah. all around the city. Yeah, they're doing an Alice one, some Alice in Wonderland one, sometime soon, if I remember. Yeah, um, yeah honestly, this is great. Uh, but getting people to roam the property and see things and maybe go places they wouldn't have. Because mm-hmm. you could have, you know, for example, one of the places to go be the gift shop, for example. Or yeah, exactly. You could have it be an, an attraction maybe that doesn't get a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. You can send them to places they might not otherwise go, and they will see more of your stuff and hopefully buy more of it. Mm-hmm. I think it's a brilliant idea, and I would love to see that implemented at Haunts, even if it's just a free thing that doesn't require Like, you could just put up, you know, hide signs mm-hmm. where you solve this clue, here's the next one type thing, and make people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Go from place. Like, my dad, and then my memory here is, my favorite Easter ever mm-hmm. was when my dad, and this is how old I am, <laughs> when my family got a Tandy 2 computer mm-hmm. with a printer. 
And it was one of those old dot matrix sperms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that. Well, we got one of those. Well, I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think anyone else does. I think I just lost everybody under the age of like 35. <laughs> Probably 30 now. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Basically, what he did was rather than have an Easter egg hunt, mm -hmm. we did an Easter egg scavenger hunt. My brother and I did this. And what he did is he took a piece, strip of paper, wrote a clue on an egg, stuff, and then took it. And then each clue led to the next egg all over the house and the yard and the backyard. Hit yes. it, it looked like one of those fucking family circus comics where the kid's walking through everything. Yeah. That's what we were doing. Yeah, no, I get it because my mom did the same thing, but without a computer. She yeah, you don't need up, a computer, obviously. She made up her own clues and did it. This was just my dad's excuse to play with a fucking computer and to justify buying an expensive computer for the house. Oh, I know. This is how my dad justifies things. And yeah. I do, too, honestly. Yeah, and it honestly was my favorite. And after that, I kept begging, can we do another one of those? Can no. we do another scavenger hunt? No, it was too much work, apparently. We never did one either. I, I think the same reason. I think yeah. my dad bit off more than he could chew with it, especially trying uh -huh. to do it on the computer. He got it done. I mean, you yeah. know, applause, but... Yeah, I, same situation. We, we did it once. I remembered it. I loved the hell out of it. Never did it again. Mm-hmm. One and done, baby. Yeah. All right, moving on, though. <laughs> All right. A uh, daughter helps save dad's hor horror ornaments business with a TikTok video. Oh, man. <laughs> this is from WLWT.com and Gene <laughs> Moose. Actually, his article's by CNN. CNN. It's on WLWT. Yeah. It's, it's weird. <laughs> Got down lower. Um. Yeah, Gene moves at CNN. But basically, the daughter saw the dad roaming around the warehouse where he keeps the ornaments and muttering about why aren't any ship shipments coming in, you know? Well, you, any have, orders, yeah. Any orders. We're going to have to, like, close the business and stuff because we just aren't getting the orders that we normally get. And they sell things like bad elves and evil pickles, and they've got some really cute candy corns I went and looked, mm -hmm. and some Krampus ornaments. Obviously. Obviously. Can, obviously. Um, but they're ornaments. Um, they do horror horror ornaments. Horror, horror ornaments. <laughs> that, 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 I, I've been trying to pronounce that without sounding like I'm making a, a sex worker slur for a while now. Yeah. I... <laughs> At their, but they run it out of their home in Grand Rapids, <coughs> Michigan. Um and in two days after the video was put out, um, they had as many orders as they had gotten the rest of the year. And these are fairly reasonably priced. Yeah, I actually checked out a few. They were yeah. reasonably priced. They looked cool. Yeah, they, um, I think they started at like $12. And so. I, I do find this story very touching. Yeah. But you and I both know this daughter will never let him forget it as long as they both may live. <laughs> Yeah. She has this right over his head until the day they both die. Yeah, we, but it was a but sweet thing. It was for... such a sweet thing to do. And, you know, I'm not a TikTok fan, I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Yeah. I'm an old bastard. We're just out of the, the age range. Which is weird because our oldest friend is probably the one we know biggest in the TikTok. Yeah, well, and so that particular friend finds these trends first and tells us about them. <laughs> And then we just kind of don't listen, and then they become big things. Yeah. So it's next a, time, I'm going to listen. It's a bit like how I found out about Teenage... When I was, like, 10, <laughs> I found out about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from my 40-something-year-old aunt. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying, you know. Uh, it, it, it's it's Sometimes that happens. That's how it would be. But, yeah, this was great, and... And it does show the power of TikTok and social media mm -hmm. done well. So, yeah, kudos to the family and congratulations on the success. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I have much else to add to that. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> and our final story this week <laughs> is an article by Kenneth Seward at Kotaku. When things go wrong with players solving, and I would put that word solving in fucking air <laughs> quotes so big, you could see them from fucking Mars. Uh -huh. <laughs> um escape solving escape rooms basically and i think we're going to might set this aside as a topic for later uh -huh. as another research topic because i want to get like all of the escape room horror stories we can get and just go over them one at a time yeah. and maybe talk about you know how they could have been avoided or whatnot <clears throat> but horror stories from a bunch of it's basically a list of the horror stories from escape rooms and wow yeah um uh, just wow so some of y'all people are fucked up is what i'm trying to say here 
some people get overwhelmed under pressure and start acting There's irrationally. No pressure. You're locked in the fucking. Yes, but people. Okay, so you feel the same pressure. Like, whenever it, it, you're close to solving the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, if you're not close to solving it, you know, whatever. Yeah, you mean, um, and there is not, definitely tension there. But I'm there, not... is, there is tension. There is the, oh my gosh, I'm so close, I, I want to, you know, solve this thing. And um, and people do some crazy things under stress. Yeah. Um, the one that, well, one of the ones that stood out to me was somehow, some way... Mm-hmm. A group, and apparently it was a large group. Yeah, of ten people. Yeah, ten people. They managed to take a sink off a wall. There was a puzzle. It was apparently a horror-themed escape room. Yeah. Where you had to stick your hand into the drain of the sink, and it looked all gross and yeah. goopy and stuff. None of the ten people... Um, Wanted to do it. Which, I mean, A, they obviously solved the puzzle. Yeah. They solved the puzzle part. Well, that part. That part of it, yeah. And they knew it was in the drain. Mm-hmm. But rather than stick their hand in and just pull out the key or whatever it was, mm-hmm. they 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 opted instead to literally take the sink off the wall. Yeah. And the people watching the game, and the first thought you have is like, "Well, where are the people watching the game? Where's the voice of God? Where's yeah. that?" Yeah, good question. Well, here's what happened: it was such a large group, the voice of God didn't have eyes on the sink. Yeah. It basically they could see the backs of like half the group, and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> And now this the same group mm-hmm. came back. Yeah, why were they allowed back is the next question I would ask. That's a you... very good fucking question. Maybe they put it underneath somebody else's name. But they were allowed back. Same room. There's there's a uh, there's a drain in the floor this time. So while the voice of God did see it and was yelling for them to stop, nobody listened. And they tore up tiles off of the floor around the pipe to get into the pipe. I think that group needs to spend less time in escape rooms and more time in rage rooms. Yeah, I think they, they yeah, seem inherently that or destructive. Just open up a demolition business. You know, we come in with our bare hands, de- no. bare hands demolition. There you go. Yeah, we go <laughs> oh, go to open a junkyard or something and like put some cars out there and yeah. rent like ten minute for ten dollars and if you want to rent like a sledgehammer it's an extra five bucks or something yeah <clears throat> i think it's more than that for rage rooms but yeah oh rage rooms are more expensive than that i'm just yeah. thinking like a, a, a cheap knockoff outdoor version of yeah. it yeah um another one that would be fun thing to do at a haunt yeah it would just to be able to grab a well although you know scared people and weapons are not necessarily the greatest thing. yeah you're gonna have to create some separation there yeah uh, but one of the things that I found, it one of the other stories that was breathtakingly, it was A, amazing. <laughs> yeah. But also kind of terrifying was a guy used a pole. Yeah, it's one of the ones with the magnets on it that you're supposed to get a key out yeah, of the Yeah, get thing. a key or something. He took the pole, and by the description they gave in the story, yeah. slid in her door and then used leverage to pop the door off its hinges. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Basically. Yes. He's, he looked at the time. He said, we're not going to make it. And I'm then, getting out that door. And then physics <laughs> a way to get the door off the hinges. The other one, and this one actually isn't destructive. It's just fucking impressive. Uh-huh. Was there was a group that had to reach a briefcase without triggering any um, lasers. Uh-huh. Now, the way you solve the puzzle is you go to these switches on the wall and you, you Sudoku that shit or whatever and you turn uh-huh. off all the lasers. Uh-huh. This team was apparently Russian gymnasts, though. <laughs> Russian acrobats. Uh-huh. What they did is they formed a five-person tower to get to the goddamn... <laughs> and I'm like... And they were given the win. I'm like, no shit they were given the win. Yeah. You're goddamn right you gave them the win. Yeah. Because that is... <laughs> so, so this story is worth reading all the way oh, through. Oh, yeah. God, it's a long <laughs> article. We haven't even covered half of it. No. Um, one of the ones towards the end that stood out, though, was... There was a group that was separated into two separate rooms. And oh, God. And there was a, a tray to pass tools between. Yeah, a little well, hole in the wall, a little small hole. Yeah. Yeah. 
Instead of passing Apparently holes... baby-sized hole. <laughs> well, yes. Thank you for the spoiler. No. <laughs> they were passing the baby through the hole back and forth. Which, why is there a baby? I don't know. Why baby? And, and how old is this baby? Is the baby trying to hold things and pass it through? I mean, or were they just fussy and they were passing it to whichever person they wanted to be with? I, I have so many questions, but they had to be stopped. No shit. Don't don't put the baby in the hole. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Tool hole is not baby place. Yeah. And, you know, that's one of the things about escape rooms that I really enjoy um, is going in and seeing where the do not touch Mm -hmm. or do not destroy stickers are. Outlet is not part of the game. Don't put things into the outlet. (laughs) Yeah. Please don't touch the wires. They are live. Which, okay, to be fair to people that fuck around with outlets, there are a lot of games that have puzzles related to fuses and switches. Yeah. And they're like, we had one where they went through on all the outlets and said, Mm -hmm. do not touch, not part of game. But one of the puzzles was literally sticking real fuses in a real switch box. Yeah. That obviously the switch box wasn't running electricity through it. It was just a sensor to see when you connected things right. right. But still, you, yeah, okay, you, you do have to be clear that those realistic electrical things are out of bounds, and this one is inbounds. Yeah. You do have to clarify that. I agree yeah. with it. Honestly, I think a lot of this points to um, a lack of player testing, because here's the problem. I realized this as I was reading mm-hmm. the story. Uh, we've actually helped with some player testing on escape rooms. Yeah. But we're veterans. Yeah. We've probably done about five or six dozen escape rooms. I know there are people out there that have done many times what we've done. Oh, yeah. But we're still in our 70s or 80s on these. Yeah. i got to pull up my sheet to see how busy we are. So we're veterans. We've done a handful of these, at least. We mm-hmm. know what we're doing. They need to bring some idiots off the street that ain't ever done an escape room before mm-hmm. and let them try it. Yeah. You need to bring the daft pack. Yeah. Need- yeah. We didn't even talk about the... Um, <laughs> People who come in inebriated and wind up either vomiting all over the stuff or passing out. And their friend's just leaving them the fuck behind. What are you going to do? I mean, if you're the friend in that situation, I don't know what your alternative is. Yeah. No, it's... We we, we like a drink or 20, um, but we have never done an escape room with any alcohol in us. Oh, no. No, it's one of the rules. It's like we we, 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 we want our brains sharp for those. We want to be at a thousand percent when we get in there, and that is not the case when you've had alcohol. Yeah. Now we have left many of an escape room to go straight to go get alcohol. Mm-hmm. Did that recently in um shit? Where were we? Alabama. Yeah. yeah. No, on the Gulf Coast. Yeah. Yeah. The Gulf Mobile. Coast. Yeah, Mobile. We did that in Mobile recently. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll do that, but no, we never drink before going into an escape room because that is stupid. Yeah. That is a great way to guarantee the handicap yourself. And Yeah, but, you know, on the other hand, I could see having a drink before going in just to calm, calm my... Uh, calm nerves. Yeah. But yeah, My, that, my self-doubt a little but bit. But yeah, this is definitely <laughs> one you want to read the full story on. Um, it, it's a great article, and once again, it's on Kotaku. Yeah. Uh, so, but... I, I do want to get together that um, Escape Room Horror Stories episode uh-huh. and combine some of these with some of the others out. There's plenty of these types of lists out there. Mm-hmm. And I, I got to tell you, I never cease to be amazed by how smart people can be while being so stupid. Yeah. Like the guy that mm-hmm. physics the door off the hinge. Yeah. Yeah. Like, look, I, I pick locks. Mm-hmm. It is one of my hobbies. That's where I thought that story was going to go yeah. until I read that he got a pole. Well, and my, my other thought is like, you know, I, I, I own several hinge pin removers. Yeah. They're little springy things with a point on it that like, yeah. knock hinge pins out. So, yeah, I know how to remove a hinge pin. I would not have thought of that. Yeah. What he did and how it was described, I would not have thought of. It would work. It could work, especially if the hinges were a certain type. Mm-hmm. But, Wow. That is incredibly smart while doing something exceedingly dumb. Yes, and ignoring the people yelling at you to stop. <laughs> I just, oh my god. But yeah. I, this makes me these... feel less bad about my first escape room experience when I got yelled at. Yeah. Poking the eye. Yeah. Because there was a, an eye with a hole in it. You were supposed to poke it. Yeah. But not with any of the things I tried to poke it with. <laughs> and not that. Get your mind out of the fucking gutter. <laughs> Never tried. Didn't get that desperate. Um... <clears throat> 
But yeah, apparently I tried like everything that was remotely the correct size mm-hmm. on the way to open, trying to get that open. And, you know, but yeah, at least it was in play and meant to be poked. I was just using the wrong things. Yeah. And in my defense, they had a lot of things that didn't look like they could go down that hole. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so I got yelled at by the hand of God, by the voice of God, my very first escape room game. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I haven't been well, yet. I, I have to wonder how many of these uh, people, this was their first escape room game. Well, for that one that tore up the fucking tile, we know it was at least their second. That's very true. Yeah. <sighs> I don't even know how to begin <laughs> ripping a sink off a wall with my bare hands. To have ten people? <laughs> I guess. I don't even know where to begin with that, because that's usually bolted on pretty intensely. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I, the one we have in our bathroom, I know, is bolted with these huge fucking bolts to the wall. Yeah. And even though it doesn't have anything beneath it, I know all my body weight has been on that sink without any give. Well, and the cats get up there regularly to drink out of it, and one of those is 20 pounds. And he does not land there gracefully sometimes. Boom! No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, she doesn't. That's the yeah. female cat. She does not land up there. She is about as graceful <laughs> as a bag dancing in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> to go back to American Beauty, it's uh, not graceful. But anyways, I think that's all we have this week. Um, hopefully, like I said, no, we had some serious stuff in the beginning, but hopefully we end up with a little levity. If you like the idea of an episode of these escape room horror stories, let us know. We would love to uh, cover them. And if you have any of your own from working at one, send it in. We're haunt- at hauntweekly.com, hauntweekly on Twitter, hauntweekly on Facebook, and youtube.com slash hauntweekly. Send it in. I would love to hear your thoughts on that because I think that could be a fun topic that's haunt adjacent, admittedly, but I think it's related enough. I can justify it. Yes. But on that note, everyone, thank you for spending the past hour with us. This was episode 368 of Haunt Weekly, covering the November-December news. Until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And we will see you all next week with a holiday-themed show that required more than a little bit of research. Be interested. See you then.